Continuing our study in the Gospel of John, we are in the Bread of Life Sermon, the Lord preached in Capernaum, and we are in chapter 6, verses 48 through 51, could be titled, Their Ancestors Ate Manna and Died, He is the Bread of Life. So these verses, here in this portion, do develop a strong contrast between the bread of life, which brings life, and the death that eventually overtook all that ate of the manna in the wilderness. Chapter 6, verse 48. I am the bread of life. In line with the discussion preceding uh, 635, this sermon closes with a declaration that was also used to open it. I am the bread of life. This is in line with the Jewish style of preaching at that time. Perhaps because the literal explanation of of the figure of speech, bread of life, is rejected by the Jews, he comes back to that figure of speech. This figurative bread of life is developed further with the use of the term, my flesh. Chapter 6, verses 49 and 50. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down out of heaven so that anyone may eat of it and not die. The difference between the manna from heaven and the Lord Jesus as the bread of life is developed in verses 49 through 51. Their fathers ate in the wilderness and died. While each person accepting the bread of life, Jesus alone will not die. They will live forever and ever. The old religion might have been amazing, but how does it compare to the grace and truth that are in Christ Jesus? Remember chapter 1, verse 17? All that is in the old religion pales in comparison to what is available for us in Jesus Christ. Those in the old religion, even those that got to eat that manna in the wilderness, manna from heaven, they eventually all died. And this is all the more striking when we remember that with only a few exceptions, those that ate that manna in the wilderness died in the wilderness as an act of the discipline of God. But with this new bread that comes down from heaven, anyone that eats of it will not die. Chapter 6, verse 51. I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. If anyone eats from this bread... He will live forever, and the bread which I give, it is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. This contrast between death under Moses and the law versus life from him who is the living bread is developed further here. Eat this bread and live forever. He will give this bread his flesh for the life of the world. So in this verse, he repeats verse 50 using a new term which surprises us, my flesh. And the giving of that flesh will give life, not just to Israel, but to the world. If the phrase, the bread which I give, it is my flesh, is read by Christians, they might interpret it to refer to the Lord's Supper, similar to the expression, Take this, it is my body, in Mark 14.22, for instance. But the passages which discuss the Lord's Supper use the term body, not flesh. This chapter in the Gospel of John focuses on the Jewish readers. It's a sermon given in the synagogue in Capernaum. They don't know anything about the Lord's Supper, but they understand about the manna in the wilderness. The use of the term flesh here reminds us of 114. The Word of God became flesh. As flesh, or as man, he can become the sacrifice for the life of the world. Has he not been called the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world? So this interpretation that the expression, my flesh, which I give for the life of the world, refers to the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus on the cross, and it doesn't refer directly to the Lord's Supper. Indeed, 
The Lord's Supper refers to the sacrifice of the Lord on the cross, and this sermon refers to the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus on the cross. But the sermon does not refer directly to the Lord's Supper. Let's not make that mistake as we interpret this. He says, my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. This word for here, it's, uh, the Greek is huper. It's often used in the context of the Lord's sacrifice for people. And you can see this same preposition doing the same sort of thing in John 10, 11, 10, 15, 11, 51 and 52, 15, 13, 17, 19, and 18, 14. So again, the Lord here is strongly contrasting the bread of life, which brings life, and the death that eventually overtook all that ate of the manna in the wilderness. <laughs>